This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. On today's repair, we're going to do a transmission swap. I have two John Deere's back here. One of them is an LA-115, and one of them is something cobbled together on an LA-105 chassis. What we're going to do, this LA-115 has seen better days, especially when it comes to the mowing deck. We have a good transmission. We have a good engine. This particular mower has one of the five-speed transmissions because it was an LA-105 and we're going to take the transmission out of the hydrostatic out of this LA-115 and put it into this machine. So this video we're going to I'm gonna do my best to show you all how I do it. We're going to go through the process. Granted it might be a little bit long so bear with me. That's the way that some of my videos are and we're going to see if we can get something that's a lot better and a lot better shape going for a customer that I have. I'll tell you how I got everything and then we will uh, get started on it. Let's do it. So this LA-115 belongs to a customer uh, at our church. He has had this and has ran it. The issue is he's got a bunch of rocks and stuff in his yard and so He's got to mow around a lot of stuff, and you know if you got to mow around a lot of stuff, you're sometimes going to hit stuff, and unfortunately that's what's been happening with this. The mower deck, y'all know these John Deere 42-inch mower decks aren't the best as in terms of uh, durability. He's done some welding and things like that in order to keep it going, but it's kind of at the point after around 400 and some hours that it's, it's pretty toast. Um, good news is the rest of the mower is good so at the very least he can use this as a parts mower if he needs parts for this whenever I get it done so that's awesome for him um, again typical LA 115 it's got the hydrostatic in it got the 19 and a half horsepower Briggs runs and drives and does all the things that it needs to for uh, a lawn tractor except for the mowing deck situation uh, even though, I mean, the front end is still good on it. This deck may be able to be saved and put on another machine or something along those lines. I don't know. It's pretty, pretty beat up though, unfortunately. So I don't know if that's going to be the case. But we'll move on to this one. And so I got this one in a trade, knowing that he's had, he had a, that John Deere right there. Um, I traded this. For a craftsman like a an old weathered craftsman LT 1000 and it's a I honestly don't know what model it is it is a 100 series John Deere that's all I can really tell you the hood says 115 but inside we've got some horsepower Briggs V twin on it um, a little bit of grass build up here on the engine but it's got that Briggs V twin on it that looks like it's been swapped at some point because I don't think the exhaust is for this because it points up a little bit and it's kind of kind of uh, done a little bit of heat uh, transfer to the hood there but what it is it's got a 54 inch deck it had the five-speed transmission that is very crunchy, so it is done. Um, somebody's upgraded the seat, it looks like. But the on the back side, I don't know if you can see the model down here. Right there, it says LA-105. So this thing started out as a LA-105, which was basically John Deere's base model that year. And I guess somebody had something else and put the garden tractor tires on it, the 54 inch deck, and just beef this thing up. Uh, that's all that I can guess has happened here. Uh, the other thing I can see is that it says it has 153 hours, but this hour meter 
seems to be newer because these are the same model years, right? And that hour meter right there. You can still see the hole for this, for where the manual PTO was. This is an X-Series John Deere um, steering wheel. And then this electric PTO switch looks like it has been added because you can see that the the um, that has been uh, tampered with, or the sticker is uh, the text of the sticker right there. I don't know how to describe that any better. So that's a it's just a weird situation. I wanted to highlight this before we got started. Good thing is internally. On the back side here, the mounting points look the same. Everything on the frame looks the same because they're both LA100 series John Deere's. So in theory, it should just be the transmissions swapping, adding the pedal to this machine for the forward and backward, and that linkage. That appears to only be two lock washers, so that's good. And then... Just putting everything together. We're going to start with swapping this transmission out of the five speed so that I kind of have an idea. I've never done a John Deere transaxle before, so y'all are going to bear with me here. And we're going to have an idea of how to take this one out so that when we go to the hydro one, it's going to be a little bit easier and a little bit faster. And we know what I need to put on to this machine off of the hydrostatic, which I don't think is much. We'll see. So the first step we're going to do is the deck. Fairly the same across most of these L uh, A John Deere's. You have let me get you off the tripod. Your mounting point in the front right here. You have a mounting point up top, right there. There's the lever. It'll fall right down. And then your mounting point in the back. Same thing for the other side. If you have a manual PTO like that machine, you also take off the spring for that uh, and the cable. That's the only difference. You'll take the uh, belt off the uh, front PTO pulley there, or the crankshaft pulley, and then we should just be able to drag this thing out. We might have to do a little bit of wheel turning and stuff to get it out, but let's see. So there we go. That gives us a bunch of access to the uh, bottom of the machine so that we can take off the drive pulley when it comes to that case. I've looked under this, and we can go look under it together here. Both of these machines look like they're very easy to swap these transmissions out. So it looks like the only big... It really doesn't look like there's a big thing associated with this. You have your brake linkage right there in the middle of the screen. You have obviously your park brake pulleys right here that allow the tension to go on and off. That's the same on both machines. It's not uh, one that turns all the time. So that's, that's good. And that's it on this one. You have your shifter linkage and stuff. So we'll take all that mess off. And we should be in good shape after that all that looks really easy to do so that's nice um i'm gonna start taking off these things i'll get to the point i'll show you everything since it's a little tight under here and then we'll go ahead and uh you know jack everything up and just take this thing take this thing out of here it looks like there's what three bolts on each side one right here and then two and there's a third one in the back on each side. Um, the shifter linkage. And the brake rod right there. And I think that's it. Hydro will be a little bit more difficult, but it shouldn't be much. So let's, uh, let me get to the point where this thing's about to come out. So, taking the tires off. Y'all saw me take the deck off. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
now what I've also done is I've taken the, the drive belt off the back. All I did was push the park brake down and I had enough slight to get it off of that back pulley. Now what's going to happen is I've got a, looks like that's either like a 3 8 or a 10 millimeter right there. On the other side as well, I have these two 7 16 and on this side, shifter setup. Let's see what we've got going on here. We do need to take this little ball thing off. And then we've got underneath, same thing on this side. We just have to figure out what the deal is with the shifter linkage right here. So it is going up. It looks like it's all self-contained. It doesn't like it's being held on by anything except for this bracket right here. So it looks like a half inch will take that off. That'll free everything up here. We'll get the spring off right here for that. So that should be all free and clear. Let's see if we can get that off. There we go. So that makes everything all free and clear right here. So I'm gonna take those bolts out. You can kind of see that there's a little bit of grease right there on the outside of the casing. I don't know if transmission busted right there or, or if the garden tractor tires were just too much for it. I'm not sure. Uh, or these transmissions could genuinely be not good units. I'm not 100% sure. Either way, we're gonna get this off. I'm gonna take those bolts off like I mentioned and uh, and we should be able to just slide this thing out uh, after that. So stay tuned. So I've taken the bolts that I told you I was going to take out. The shifter one on the uh, right side. Don't forget your brake rod right here. I forgot to mention that. Um, and then your bolt right here. And your two bolts right here. We've got one left. And like I said, the shifter one on this side right there and we've taken these two out so in theory hang out with me here we'll see if this last bolt allows this transmission to drop out of this thing gotta go from the bottom come to the frame right here Okay, so I'm hoping that the shifter decides it wants to slide out with this, with everything as well. If not, well, we're right here. We might as well take this linkage off and right there so that's a half half on the bottom and seven sixteenths on the top so let's see if i can fit this thing in there okay. all right so that has freed the transmission let me jack this mower frame up and that's it for that so this is as good as trash unfortunately i'll show you why here in just a second you probably can already see it right there y'all can't see it shaft is just shot moving the whole shaft right there that pulley looks good but uh yeah, so, like I said, pretty much good as trash. We'll take spacers and washers off. I'd love to see why it failed, but I've got a thousand projects that I need to get gone and done, and this is one of them. So, failure, bad. Link, shift linkage. It appears, oh, we got one more bolt to get off for that. So it's this bolt right here. We'll get that off. And that should allow 
everything that needs to come off of this to come off. So let's do that. Probably Okay. Let's see if we can get down here with a wrench. Yes, okay. So oh, that should take all this off. We got the shift linkage out so that's good that's it for this um, uh, drive belt obviously and uh, we'll swap the drive belt out because it's different lengths number one and number two it's really bad so it's just a matter of taking it off of these pulleys right here We'll feed it through as it go through the steering shaft. Oh, it does, doesn't it? So I think what I do when I do that is I take the tie rods off. Uh, I think and feed it through there to feed it back around. I'm not sure. It's been a while for one of these. I'll tell you what I do. We'll get the second one off. I'll tell you the differences between the two. And then we'll hopefully be done here fairly soon. And while I'm here, one of the other things I've got to do is take this footwell off. You can see that there is an, a provision for the reverse pedal right here in the foot pedal. But the, um, the little rubber foot thing for the fender, where you footwell for the fender, will not allow you. So you just take these little clips on the bottom down here, unclip them. And it pops right off, just like we're about to do here. We'll get all this hardware out of the way. Over there. Because that one does not have to come off. Sorry, stirring up grass and allergies here. So that's the footwell. We'll take that off. Obviously, we'll clean up underneath of that. And there's your reverse provision right there. And you're in good shape. So... Let me get the hydro in here, and we'll see what we can do to get everything off so that we can swap and put that transmission to this machine. Have a good machine for the guy. So I'm partially through with the hydrostatic removal. Here's the differences that I'm seeing so far, mostly with the pedal. Everything else is basically the same. Uh... The brake's even in the same location, it's just down instead of on the side. Uh, and then your uh, linkage for your transmission is right here. It fits into that hole with a clip that's similar to that. And I just took a hammer and knocked it out. Uh, one tap of the hammer got this loose, turned the steering a little bit and slid it out. One other thing, I've got to find it real quick, there's a pin. You'll notice on the back side of the transmission where the hydrostatic pulley is, it's going to be sticking up right here. What that does is it keeps the belt on. You have to take a 5 8 wrench and take that off. Once you get that off, you're able to remove the belt from the pulley. And so, as you can see, this belt's not the best either. And um, what you got to do. Just remove that the brakes off one other thing you got to remove this pedal assembly which we we don't have to do to remove the transmission but we have to do to swap everything out on it and what that entails is basically hitting that out as well uh, do your best not to mushroom it I think the clearance is a little bit tighter on this one eh, I think we'll be all right actually but remember, you got to get this pedal off too, which looks like there's a tab right here. We can pull that tab and slide this pedal off. So we've got that down pat. And I think we're going to be good here in just a few minutes. So I'm going to take that tab off, um, finish disassembling, taking off the brackets. The bracketry is the exact same on this machine as it is the other machine. So 
just the brake linkage and the hydro linkage is a little bit different one thing other one other thing to note is that you have your disengagement lever down here that's got to come off too and it's attached right there and you've got one of these little clip things you i just pulled that right off so you take that hopefully y'all saw that that'll allow you to pull oh sorry for the shakiness it's a lot it's hard to uh hard to do that underneath the machine but just pull that lever right out and we're good there's that pin i was talking about you'll take a 5 8 inch wrench and screw it out and you're done so just a matter of a few bolts between me and having this uh, transmission out, I am gonna go ahead and take the rear tires off so that I can have better access to everything. Uh, yeah, good deal. When I'm about to get to the point to take this off, I'll let you know and I'll let you see the action. So six bolts, transmission number two is out. Came Took the bolts off like I showed you in the first transmission. Lifted the mower up, pushed it forward. There she sits. So, get this one out, get this one back in, and we're gonna put that one back on and see if that is going to, well, it's gonna work. It's, it's not a matter of if it's gonna work, it is gonna work. And uh, we'll be in good shape. I'll go to town, I'll muck everything up, We'll reattach everything. All right, guys, you want to watch me put this thing on? Might be fun, but we're going to do it. I've got it partially on. I've got a tire kind of holding up, so I kept the old tires on. Got a tire holding up the front of the transaxle so it doesn't try and push forward on me. And now I've just got a matter of getting it in between the frame rails here, and we should be good. So let me uh, work on that here. Uh, hopefully, y'all see me do this. We've got them on each side now, that's good. Alright, that's... We're getting there. We're almost in the middle here. So what I've got, to, I mean, it's basically mocked up. What I've got to do is get the bolts lined up right here about right there pull the transmission back a little bit or at least get one bolt started here if I can do that we'll be all right This right here, guys, is probably the hardest part of the job. Getting everything lined up like this. If you can get it all lined up like this, you're golden. I'm gonna pull, let's see. What I'm gonna do is pull this bracket up. I don't know if y'all can see what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna pull the bracket up and see if I can get it to lock in in the area that it needs to lock into here. Now we might do the other, we might do this bolt here next. All 
All right, I got my thread started on each of these. Now I've got a, I've just got to line up those brackets right there, right there, and we should be good. So I'm gonna do it on both sides. One thing I am gonna have to take off is this belt keeper right here for the five speed. It's just a, a 10 millimeter right there to take off. Once I take that off, we'll insert the belt in here and get that pin back in and we should be good to go after that. Really not a hard swap. If you think a Craftsman is easy, this is just as easy. One of them six speed Craftsman, just as easy as that, all right? So maybe even easier, honestly, from what I can tell so far, especially from a hydro to a, uh, uh, from a gear drive to a hydro, super easy. I will put all these bolts back in, get everything threaded, have everything up, mocked up and everything, and then we'll work on getting that pedal off of the other one. So one thing you do have to do before we could take this hydrostatic stuff off is you have to pull this reverse off. There's a tab that it fits in under here, right there. I just took a screwdriver, pried it up past the tab, took some pliers at the top of it, and was able to physically pull it off. So now what I'm gonna do is see if I can ball peen this off uh, of the clip and be able to release this mechanism off of that rod. There already is a rod on that other, on that LA-105 that I just have to slide this on to, so that's good. There we go. And so, as long as I can get this down far enough where we can slide it off, and hopefully we can without having to pull this fender up. Might have to pull the fender off to get it. Darn. Because what's going to happen is. Oh, man. That looks like I'm going to have to pull the fender just to get this off. Hang tight. If I can find another way, I'll let you know. But if not, we'll pull this fender up at least enough so that we can get this off. So this has turned into a little bit more time-consuming deal than I was hoping that it was going to. But I think we've got... God, I think what I can do is I can at least lift up this front portion of the fender, get it up far enough to where I'm not going to have or to where I can get this off. What I've done in order to accomplish that is I've taken the battery out. So there's six um, bolts here holding the actually holding the whole dash console on, but also holding the um, fender rear fender onto the frame. So I'm taking those six bolts off. One of them's right here in the front. The second one's right there. The third one's kind of toward the back. And then three on each, three on this side as well. I'm going to take those six off. We're going to see if that's going to be enough to get this pedal off. Hopefully it is because I don't want to have to take the whole thing loose around the back as well. So this is actually the hardest part of the job so far. Most time consuming at least. Pedal's out. Situation I had to do. Okay, so... The six bolts I showed you in here for the front of the fender, and then I had to take a three quarter inch impact and take the steering column out down here and pull it up. So once you take that three quarter inch bolt out, you can take the steering column and just push it up and you will have everything that you need uh, clearance wise to lift the front of this up enough and then work the, work your way to get that out. So, don't forget your spring here. It's gonna go into 
uh, an area so that you can push everything forward and backward like you're supposed to. Uh, I'll show you that setup once I figure it back out again because it did just fall off. So uh, that's that on this. Again, there's the rod here. Um, the 105, even though it came with a gear drive, the frames allowed for a rod on it right here. So we've already got that. I'll clean that up. Have to do the same thing to this that I did to the 115 in terms of taking the battery out and taking all that other junk out in order to get this, uh, to get that thing on. So we're going to have a little bit of work to do, but we should be all right when it comes to that. Just got to get the spring back on. I've got to clean up because I'm done for today. I got further than I originally thought. We've got this, we've got this in, so that's good. Basically, all I've got to do is put this on and get the belt swapped, and this thing will probably be a runner in a not too distant future. So, um, again, about two hours worth of work got us to this point. I hope this has been good for y'all so far. If you're trying to figure out how to change one of these, really easy. The hardest part about it is just this linkage right here. You got to take the fender off to get uh, all the pedals and stuff in. So I'll see if I can show you the process of me putting the pedal on and we'll go from there uh, when it comes to that. So sometimes I like showing you after I do it, especially for the first time, uh, I got it though. Um, in terms of getting the foot pedal on, I had to take off the six bolts here holding this console on. What that does is it allows you to loosen the front of the fender up enough to where I can lift it up like so to slide the whole mechanism on. And so you have to lift this up at the same time and it's a two-handed job that I can show you real quick. See, lift up and that'll allow you to get everything underneath this. You have to lift pretty hard now. Make sure, you know, keep the pedal assembly just like it came off. One thing I do want to mention to y'all is the spring, is the return spring, and all that does is keeps the reverse pedal from sticking up on you. That spring goes in with the loop it's right there. The loop or the the bend is facing forward and the, it'll be on the right side. Then what you do is you take the straight end of the spring, have it tension right here and then wrap it just it's just over the top and it clips into a little clip area right here on the reverse pedal that's the one thing that i got hung up on and i needed to research but that pedal is on i turned the steering all the way to the right and that allowed me to get the forward and reverse rod on so we've got forward and reverse motion now on the front i hope that's um a decent way to explain it I'm going to put the clips on next and the washers that we're missing on right here and right here and we'll uh, put this pedal on as well and we'll be done in just a second. So the clips are on. These are them self-locking ones. See, I just pushed it on just like you see there. Everything is tight. Forward and reverse is working correctly. So that's awesome. One thing that you can't forget is also that rod in the back to disengage the transmission transaxle uh, what needs to happen there is you have to push uh, the 90 degree in through the back pop it in and it's in good shape now put that little lock washer on it or that locking uh, nut not a nut but I guess a lock washer on it one other thing I've also done I've already put the brake on I don't know if I mentioned that um, swapped out this because I don't need the five speed on it anymore so you can have a little cubby hole and a cup holder and the next order of business is actually 
taken off this steering column nut down here and that uh, steering gear and because we got to get this belt out. I have gotten a new belt. I will link the belt for an LA-115 in the description below. Uh, it's, an 80, it's basically an 89 inch belt. You can get by with getting exact length belts, V belts and stuff for uh, machines uh, like this John Deere. Um, just have to be mindful that some of them take OEM belts. If you're using an MTD, OEM belts only. These, I've used quite a few of these exact length blue belts for John Deere transmissions that they've done just fine. So, like I said, I'll link though, uh, the belt to, I'll link the proper number for this belt in the description below. A couple links to just generic 89 inch belts. And if you're looking for an OEM John Deere, I'll give you the Amazon link uh, for everything actually down there. While we're here, let me get the impact. We're going to take this off, this nut. And it is a three quarters steering gear. Just kind of got to wiggle it. What I'm going to do is get it straight. Get it straight. Okay. Now we're going to see if we can wiggle it out of there. Might have to lift up on the steering column up here. That's what I'm going to do next. Oh, let me get y'all out of there. Tight quarters around here. A lot of stuff I need to throw away after this. So I'm just going to lift the steering column up and that should get everything off. Sorry for the shaking this here. out steering gear dropped out right there there may be like a little bushing but what needs to happen is I've got to take that spline or that the threaded portion out there so we got to pull this wheel up a little bit more that should be good and then we should be able to just take once we take the uh, belt off the front pulley here which we might have to drop the PTO clutch. We might not. I think I've got to drop the PTO clutch a little bit. But what I'm going to do is basically drop the PTO clutch. That's a 5 8 um, I have to unplug the PTO clutch so that I can get uh, the wire out. I'll show you what I have to do down there. Uh, tight quarters. Then we'll swap the belt out. Put, it on, put the new one on. So in theory, you drop the PTO. Uh, so, situation here is, you know, this has been customized a lot. So the PTO actually has been wired in like, not with a plug, but with, uh, I think, butt connectors. But what that what that allowed me to do, I still was able to get this off with the way that they routed the um, wiring. It uh, still allowed me to get that belt off. But the situation here is this pulley is supposed to just drop and it looks, <coughs> excuse me, looks like somebody just mated this pulley uh, permanently to the machine. So that's not going to happen. So I'm fighting the guides, turning the engine and trying to use the leverage of the engine to, to make the belt go around these guides. I've got it off. I'm going to double check my belt size real quick I think I'm good just from the looks of it and slap the belt back on the front pulley put the PTO clutch back in there uh, feed it up through this top plate right here once I feed it up through there I can put the steering column and gear and stuff back on and we should be okay after that I'm sorry I can't show you all the best way to put these drive belts on um, Limited access to uh, to viewing. I could get a chain hoist maybe one day, but that's that's it. 
so far. Hopefully you're all learning from this some. One thing I want to mention, um, I had to manhandle it on the front again. Luckily this belt's a tiny bit thinner than the one that I took off. But here is the situation with these pulleys. If you take a 5 8 and just lower the pulley, it's going to be a lot easier than trying to roll them around these guides, all right? So try to do that. Um, got the park brake on now, so no biggie. But um, don't forget to put your pin back in the back there too, uh, the guide pin for the belt. So that little screw thing that I showed y'all a little bit earlier is laying around here somewhere. And we're gonna put that back on. Just gotta screw it in. It's a 5 8 wrench. And then uh, I'm gonna clear everything out and we're uh, put the PTO clutch back on. We're gonna test drive this thing. I hope that y'all have enjoyed this video so far. I'm doing my best to show y'all stuff. It's just a little difficult sometimes when I'm working under a mower with limited light, limited filming space. If you have any questions feel free to reach out and put it in the comment section i'll do my best to answer them especially if it's near the time that i publish this video so we're now putting the steering wheel back on uh, you got to slide it through a top bushing up here and then you can slide it through the bottom bushing make sure that the bushing is still in there there's a like a little grooved side on the inside of these and, a, and then just a round side. The grooved side goes in first. It fits into the grooves on the shaft and then we tighten it up. Make sure your wheel is in the position that you want it. Take the three quarters, which I don't have on there, and we're just going to tighten that up and we're done with that. Um, in terms of the pin, I've put the pin back in and after this, like I said, I'll put the PTO clutch back on and we should be in business when it comes to being able to at least test drive this thing to see if everything works on it. Getting excited guys. PTO clutch is on. A little tricky trying to get it in the keyway and then in the little slot over here on the side, but we got it done right there. So we're in the slot, we're in the keyway, everything's plugged in. We're not gonna test that here right now. Um, what we are gonna do don't forget, you have to put them six bolts back in for the console. Put my nut back on for the steering gear down there. We have good steering. I'll grease everything up for him. We are going to swap the rear tires out for the purposes of driving around. I just want to make sure that it's good. So let me crank it up. We'll see if we can drive this thing out of the garage, all right? Y'all can see middle of the busy season, right? My goodness. Here we go. pretty bad exhaust leak I think from one of the somebody's been in this exhaust I'm a little bit afraid to take it see if I could take it off oh I see it off the side there it's almost like they put the wrong muffler on it or something but like I see like weird bolt situations where a bunch of stuff is tapped and whatnot and y'all know that's not the best so we might be able to try and tighten that up a little bit right there. I think that's where it might be leaking from. Um, it's definitely not the original muffler on this. It, run, it runs and does good. It has a little bit of an exhaust leak. Um, it's just going to be what it is, I think, because I'm, I'm wary about this side because you see all these bolts and nuts and stuff that are being used to hold it together which looks like it's working on this side I think the left side is what's 
having the issue. Either way, it's driving. I'm gonna put every I'm gonna put the deck and everything back on it, put the wheels back on it, or swap the wheels out for the bigger wheels, and um we'll give this thing a final test here in just a second. Actually, I'm really happy with how this turned out. This wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be either. So excellent. Let me show you all the finished product next. All right, guys, it is done. It, I just took it and cut the backyard with it. Um, the only thing is the front end's got a little bit of play in it. That's typical John Deere, just like that L120 I had. Uh, it looks like somebody did the same thing to it, probably bent the drag link so that it has a little bit of toe in when you go in reverse, but it's tracking straight when you go forward. So that's good. Um, the engine runs good, drives good. Um, kind of deciphering everything on this now. It's the engine's from 2014, so I bet somebody had a D series John Deere, like a higher level D series, that something either happened to the frame or the transmission or something, and basically swapped everything over onto this machine. It's kind of interesting, but either way, it runs good. The, Hydro's pulling good, driving good. Guy's gonna really enjoy this. So we'll wrap this video up now uh, on this, uh, what ended up being not very difficult transmission swap. So there it is, guys. I know it's a little bit of a long video. But what do y'all think? Uh, I think I think that other mower was about done, especially in terms of the deck. I could have swapped the deck over, but that would have required a PTO and all that stuff. And then you have a 19 horsepower and engine 19 and a half power in a 54 inch deck, which is going to be hard labor for that thing, especially that single cylinder Briggs. We've got a V twin on this. It ain't perfect, but it works just fine. Runs good. Got a tiny, got a little bit of an exhaust leak, and that's really the only negative on this thing. Uh, drives good. Um, blade's decent on it. 54 inch deck. He just, he doesn't have, he has a lot of rocks and stuff in his uh, area that he cuts so he doesn't need anything really he didn't need anything new or fancy because he's probably going to be hitting rocks here and there and it won't do it good for the machine but uh, for this he's going to be getting it for de pretty decent money um, and hopefully be a little bit more durable than that 42 inch John Deere which he's gotten a lot of good use out of um, all things considered so um, here it goes. Let me know what y'all think of the transmission swap. Like I said, if you have any questions, I'll put a link to belts uh, and any other parts. I, don't, I think we only used that drive belt parts-wise. So um, I'll put a link to that down below. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. I know that I can't um, show everything given the situation with the deck being low. Uh, hard to film down there. But it basically is plug and play. It really is. It is nothing like that Husqvarna that I did a couple years ago where I had to take the entire back plate off. The only thing that's different is that you have to swap over the pedal and that requires taking the front part of the fender off so that you can raise it up and get that thing off and uh, just swapping a couple of cosmetic stuff. Um, Y'all see, have seen it in the video. Thank you all again for watching. This was actually a pretty fun one to do. I'm, I was excited to do this one, get this experience under my belt for swapping one of these John Deere um, five speeds over to a hydrostatic. Worked great, pretty easy to do. I did it in two afternoons here in the garage. So it's something that you might be able to do too. Thank you all again. I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for all the support as always. Take care.